Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper and this is the Behringer Crave. So this is not going to be like any of my other videos. This is going to be a retrospective on the Crave. And the reason for that is I wouldn't be standing here without this device. This was my very first semi-modular and it was also the reason why I rolled into Eurorack and why I'm now doing this YouTube channel. So I would not want to say that this is going to be a review or a deep dive. No, a retrospective. That's what we're going to do. So here we go. So I can't do a retrospective on the Behringer Crave without, well, taking a good hard look at the device itself. So um, I'm not going to do a full review or an in-depth deep dive on its functionality. There are better videos out there. I can personally recommend Loopop's video, which I'm going to link to uh, at the top there. And I'm also going to put it down there in the description. Um, he does a great video. Uh, make sure to, to give that a go after this one. Um, what I did when I bought this device is I didn't know anything about Behringer. I didn't know anything about brands like Moog. I didn't know what the Mother 32 was. I might have heard of Eurorack, but that's about it. I played with my NTS-1, I played with my Volkers, I just bought a pocket operator, the pocket operator arcade, which I still take out for a spin uh, on a weekly basis. And I just saw this device on Toman, if I'm not mistaken, and it was 155 euros. And I just said, that's what I'm going to do. That That's, that's exactly what I need uh, because I was thinking about modular and I want I wanted something to help me understand how everything works and this device actually helped with that as well and because it's extremely versatile I'm, I'm still using this well maybe every every other week on a fortnightly basis probably so what I would like to do is I just want to share some stories with you um, do some patches l listen to some sounds do some sound design and from then We'll just take it onwards and I'm just going to share some stories with you. So one of the things I always like to do is I like to uh, create my 90s hardcore beat. Um, as you know, I'm pretty big into punk and, and, and heavy metal nowadays. Uh, but in the early 90s, there was Gabba House, which was a really big thing in the Netherlands. And later on in the early 2000s, um, even even though I was a I was a metalhead and a, and, a, and a punk guy, I went to these parties on occasion, just drinking beer between all of these guys going out going nuts, and I love that. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab my LFO, put it in the environment gate. Well, first things first, I need to boot this machine up. I love that boot up sequence. The first time I saw that, I was like, wow. <laughs> Here we go. So we have the environment there and we do that. Well, maybe first let's have a quick look at the actual sounds, right? So we're now in the triangle or the sawtooth, I should say. And this is, of course, the, uh, the square wave. And as said, what we're going to do is we're going to create a nice beat. So I'm going to grab the try and I'm just going to put that in the environment gate. Turn it up a bit. Open up the VCA. Make sure it's there. Open up this. Turn to frequency. We're almost there, don't you worry. That's something people used to dance to in the 90s. <laughs> so 
Sometimes music is so easy. <laughs> I just love that. It's just such a, a simple thing that you can play with that all you want. Well, I'm not going to bother you with that anymore. No, don't you worry. Uh, it just gives me energy to listen to that again and it brings me back to those to those to those parties as well just me and my friends just drinking beer all night long and it was just a great time there and now i understand how they made those beats and it's it's an eye-opener for everyone so the other thing i truly like to do with my crave is i try to explore this device as much as i can so even though we only have the 3340 which is a, a perfect oscillator. So if we have, if we have a look at the um, at the wave shapes, let me just turn turn that on. Turn the sustain open. We can have a look. So this is the um, the square wave, which is of course pitch which modulatable. And I, I just love the the warmth and the energy that this sounds that emanates from this sound. It is such a warm, fuzzy feeling, and it's just, a, it's a great thing to listen to. And then of course you have the, uh, the sawtooth. It's nice, let's play with the uh, filter a bit. See how that evolves into a sine wave. There you go. Add some resonance to it. So just look at how those shapes evolve. I love that. It's almost FM-like. One of the things that really drew me into synthesizers is that whole nostalgia trip that we've all been on uh, ever since the, the lockdown. We all wanted something that made us feel comfortable, something that was recognizable, that took us away from the day-to-day, -day, well, drone essentially that we were all in. So one of the things I love to do is I, I love Stranger Things. So what you can then do is on this synthesizer with the simple, well, it's a simple sequencer. We can do so many great things with that. Is you can play the Stranger Things theme in several ways, actually. So you just saw me press record, put those notes in, stop record and press play and we can now play with the actual sound that it makes Add some glide to it just try to replicate the original sound as much as we can but this is of course only one of the ways how you can make the Stranger Thing theme song um, let me just stop the sequence I can also just do an arpeggiator and just do it like grab the the same notes and just press them at the same time you hear it go up and then start again go up and start again go up and start again but you've got several modes of the arpeggiator so if you do press shift and three, it's gonna go up and down. There you go. Okay, well, these are the things I love to do. It's pretty juvenile, I know, I know. But it's just what I love to do and what I love about the Crave, it just ensures that you explore your creativity. And 
but the other thing I'd love to do is I'd, I'd love to play and create feedback loops uh, from from the the oscillators and do some uh, frequency modulation with that but what I also love to do is, is find the actual limits of this device and all of its functionality so even though we only have the 3340 as an official VCO but we can actually use the LFO and the VCF as oscillators as well so first let's uh, give it, give the LFO a try so I'm just gonna grab the triangle wave put that in external audio and turn that to external audio. As you can see, we've got a great, well, it's not a triangle wave, but we've got a nice sine wave there. And what you can then do is you can actually grab the, the mix from there, from the, uh, the VC mix, grab VC mix, and put that into the LFO rate and now you've got even if you've got nothing connected there you've got a low to high voltage so you can find different notes by turning this knob there well turning knobs that sounds like a job for for, for cv right so if you then grab the keyboard cv and put that into the cv mix there we go It's of course not tuned, but it's something that you can use. Still this nice, right? It's a, it's a free extra oscillator. Uh, let's try that same thing with with the VCF this time around. So let's uh, disconnect this patch. Let's grab the keyboard CV, connect that to the VCF cutoff, and grab the VCF output and put that in the external audio in. So now we've got the sound coming from the VCF. But what we can then do is just turn resonance all the way up. And find that sound. <laughs> and this is perfectly tuned, so that's something I, I, I truly loved. There is so much more to do with this device, and I don't want to bother you with uh, with too much. Um, you can do. Well, you can do so many great things with this and I will always recommend this to people who say well I'm on a budget I want to know if modular synthesizers are, are for me um, I would say well pick up one of these give it a try and if you are ready for that then be ready to spend some <laughs> some actual money on the actual mo modules that you're going to use or uh, chuck out a bit more money and buy a Mother 32 and um, go loose on the device and try and figure out what what it is you like to do whether it's playing around with the the small sequencer well personally I didn't like the um, uh, the buttons there too much so I actually one of the things I bought immediately after I bought my Crave was a MIDI keyboard and I wasn't taught how to play the keyboard so I had to try and learn it myself but it was such a different experience than to playing on these buttons there but still it was something that made this device this device and I can't thank this device enough because as said I wouldn't be doing modular I wouldn't be doing this YouTube channel without this so that being said I need to thank it Okay, great. Well, first, let's uh, go back to the uh, studio and let's see uh, what else we can tell you about that journey of ours. So I truly hope that you enjoyed this retrospective and I hope you enjoyed how I shared how, what kind of role the Barringer Crave played in my personal journey. And 
of course i do hope that this will inspire you as well to take on your own musical journey whether that involves synthesizers or modular or maybe even well any sort of instrument like that you could also go out and sing if you want uh, but i truly want to inspire everyone to take that on because it's been a a tremendous part of my life ever start since i started with music again uh, once I, after i stopped doing that for quite some time um i hope you enjoyed this uh, please leave any sort of questions or feedback in the comments below or reach out to me directly either through uh, instagram twitter or facebook and you can also reach out uh, to me at jesper at the modular clubhouse dot nl if you want other than that i would say please stay safe stay healthy and hope to see you next time cheers